Hello everyone, this is Andrew Embler, CTO of Concrete 5, and today I wanted to continue our series on theming in Concrete 5.7 by talking a bit about assets. Assets, as we refer to them in Concrete 5 land, are uh, JavaScript and CSS files that you use kind of in groups for uh, adding functionality and uh, presentation to a page. So anytime that you you know, know that you need to include um, jQuery on a page or that you have a, a Lightbox library like, um, you know, jQuery Lightbox or Magnific Pop-Up. You know, usually these are groups of CSS and JavaScript files. Um, they have to be loaded in order. Some of them require other things. Um, and uh, you know that you need to include that stuff in your page, but you want to make sure that you do it in the same way. You don't duplicate assets. Um, so if one block on a page requires the Lightbox plugin, you're not loading it six times, or worse, incompatible versions. Um, and then, you know, you want to make sure that you can minify or combine those assets where appropriate for speed reasons. Um, in previous versions of Concrete 5, um, we gave you the ability to add header items and footer items, and that sort of was the basic uh, way of approaching this problem, but it doesn't you know, do anything to fix collisions. Um, it doesn't do anything to kind of help minify stuff or improve performance. And uh, it's just kind of a very blunt instrument uh, approach to fixing this problem. So in 5.7, we have a much nicer way of doing this. Um, it's called assets. And let me show you how these are defined in the core. And we'll get to this with our theme momentarily, if you'll bear with me config app.php scroll down this large configuration file and until I find assets here we go so here you can kind of see how how we're doing this um, first we give assets sort of a handle jQuery and then we give them a type and a path and then some optional uh, parameters like where did these things go, whether they can be minified or combined. Um, you're not expected to totally understand all of this yet. Um, just that these are the list of assets that we have in our site. Um, for example, we have something called core-topics and anytime that we want to include this asset on a page it will be including js slash topics dot js and css slash topics CSS. Um, we have an asset for the the uh, from the for the header bar. So uh, anytime that you want to include uh, Concrete Five uses this. So anytime you're in edit mode, we make sure to include all these dif different JavaScript files and all these different CSS files. So you can include you know basic uh, single files um, by name or groups of files as well. And all of these things take care of versioning and only including their content once and putting their content in the right place. Um, if you want to see how this works in practice, you can go into the content block and into controller.php. And if we look for require asset, you can see anytime we add the content block to a page, we are requiring the asset redactor and core slash file manager. These are just assets defined in that config file um, and it's basically a simpler way of including all the JavaScript and CSS that the redactor rich text editor needs and all the JavaScript and CSS that the file manager needs as well. So we know that we can swap this stuff out. It's less brittle than specifying exact paths in these blocks um, and in general it's a much more extensible way to work um, because you can swap these things out um, you know on the fly in your own system so if you want to use J uh, version of jQuery um, that is different than ours you can make jQuery point to something else for example um, and now why do I bring this up in the context of the theme well because I was having a problem with my theme. For example, I wanted to show off some functionality from our new design and custom template stuff, which is a, uh, a cool inline toolbar. 
and I was clicking on this stuff and I'm supposed to be seeing drop downs and I'm not and I thought to myself I bet that's because this theme is bootstrap powered and so is concrete 5 so there's maybe there's a collision in JavaScript or CSS something that is breaking this so I thought that I would view my page source and let's search for bootstrap you can see we've got the urbanic bootstrap here um, and then we have bootstrap.min.js that is handled by urbanic as well um, we have jQuery.min.js, which is handled by Urbanic as well. But then down here at the bottom of the page, we have Bootstrap Dropdown, Bootstrap Tooltip. These are all delivered by Concrete 5. And we also have jQuery.js at the top of Concrete 5's loader. So we are delivering duplicate assets, which slows down the request. And it's also breaking the request for us because we're, you know, some of these Bootstrap plugins are undoubtedly uh, undoubtedly conflicting. So what we need to do is we need to use our new page theme class file to instruct Concrete 5 not to load certain assets because we know they are taken care of by the theme. So in order to do that we are going to open up the page theme class that we had open before when we added grid support to our theme. So let's double click that. This is what it looks like. We're going to add a method called register assets to this theme, which automatically gets run anytime the theme um, gets rendered. And it's basically a place for us to tell Concrete 5 that these themes, these assets are provided by the theme, so don't worry about loading them. So I'm going to open up my helper here so I don't have to remember this code from scratch <laughs> and I'm going to cut and paste it in here and then we'll go through what's happening here so here's register assets um, the first pro the syntax here should be pretty obvious um, provides asset JavaScript bootstrap slash uh, wildcard what that means any JavaScript asset defined in uh, config slash app.php that starts with bootstrap and then has a slash, we provide it. So it doesn't have to be loaded twice. Same with CSS. Um, certain core blocks are also handled by um, this theme because we mark those blocks up with bootstrap markup. So we don't have to include the view.css found in the form block and we don't have to include a number of sort of core front-end files like pagination styles error handling because that's all bootstrap 3 markup and that's going to be handled nicely by our theme and then finally um, we say that the theme requires the jQuery um, it requires jQuery because Bootstrap requires jQuery, and that will let us remove the version of jQuery that ships with this theme. So let me just find jQuery min here. We'll kill that. And now let's refresh. And so you can automatically see down here, if I scroll back down, Bootstrap is gone from down here because Concrete 5 no longer loads it. jQuery is still being loaded, but jQuery min no longer loaded. It's loaded by Concrete 5, so there will be less uh, um, duplicate code loading. So let's refresh this page. Go into Design and Custom Template. And you can see stuff is working again. So that's awesome. We figured out what was wrong with our theme and we uh, made it load faster and such. So this is a super quick introduction to how to mark your theme as providing certain assets. Your theme can also register assets in your packages controller. So a further how to, we might go through how the color box plugin, which this, uh, which this theme ships with, we uh, will go through how we actually register that as an asset and uh, make it so that other uh, add-ons can use it uh, by name rather than having to 
you know, guess at file paths and things like that. Um, but that is a topic for later. Hope you've enjoyed this. Until next time.